Hello to Newcastle United fans. I'm joined by Lee Ryder, who, as you can see, is at St. James's Park. Um, those who uh, work at St. James's Park will know the Wi-Fi isn't always brilliant, so if Lee does drop out, we do apologise. But we're going to talk about Newcastle's 2-0 defeat to Chelsea. Lee, can you just sum up what you, what you saw today and what the mood is like inside St. James's Park? Yeah, well, obviously, it's quite subdued. It was a disappointing display overall. You know, Newcastle started quite negatively um, in terms of, you know, giving Chelsea the space on the ball and, you know, they took full advantage, I think. Yes, in the f first couple of minutes, Newcastle forced a couple of corners, etc., but uh, they couldn't really build on it. And I think Chelsea, after a long international week, um, they were there for the take, and whereas Newcastle... Only one from the start and 11 had been on international duty. So that tells you everything, really, that Chelsea were there to, to have a bit of a go at, really. And um, Newcastle paid them a lot of respect. Do you think they paid them too much respect? Because at times um, it was like a bit of a training game. The commentators on BT were kind of taken back at just how easy it was for Chelsea. I know Steve Bruce uh, told reporters in the press conference that he wouldn't like go toe to toe it. Um, with Chelsea and you would have to be a bit more clever than that but Newcastle just didn't really threaten at all and Chelsea you know they had it easy if it, again if it wasn't for Carl Darlow it would have been a lot more than 2-0 perhaps Yeah I don't think too many of them emerged from this with uh, much credit I mean you look at Carl Darlow again another good performer and Sean Longstaff but other than that I don't think anybody really um, deserves too much praise um, they just as I say stood off I think the second goal sort of summed it up. Yes, Timo Werner is a class player, but at the end of the day, Newcastle just parted. The defence just parted and, um, you know, it was just too easy. And by that time, the game the game is over. But <clears throat> to be honest, to get in at 1-0 seemed like an achievement at the time. So for Newcastle fans there, you know, it will not, it will not improve the mood. I'm well aware of that. And how big of a blow was Jamal Sales going off at half time? Obviously, he picked up a, what looked a bit like a, a knee injury, maybe, and he went down in the first half, carried on, but didn't make it out for the second half. How big of a blow was that, do you think? Or even by then, you know, would Chelsea always likely to uh, take all three points? Well, to be fair, Fabian Scher should be able to, to come on and, and step up. It shouldn't be that much of a blow. Um, you see as a captain, but no, I don't think it's that can't be used as an excuse here today. Uh, unfortunately, too many of the um, offensive players just lack that sharpness, apart from uh, say Maximan. And obviously, Sean Longstaff had a very good game in midfield. You've got to give him, you know, that's probably a seven or eight, eight out of ten performance given the mess that was going on around him. So, um, you know, good marks for him, but other than that, it's. Uh, it's difficult. It's difficult to give it to come out with any praise after that. So Maxman looked a bit more threatening than we've seen him in recent weeks. He was having fun kind of running at the players and he had uh, Zuma uh, panicked at times, but they just couldn't capitalise on the few chances they had going forward. They didn't create too much, but when they were going forward, they looked very careless in possession, which when you're against a Chelsea side as good as this one, you've got to make more of the, the chances you have going forward. because if anyone was going to get them back in the game it was going to be him and Newcastle need to get him on the ball a lot more unfortunately they're just um, I, I don't know there's just something is not quite right out there it's a mentality thing at the moment you know you can criticise players but at the end of the day if they've gone out there and been told to, to defend and just park the bus then you can't really expect too much more from it so uh yeah, very disappointing overall. And it, is that the frustration? Because when Newcastle did manage to attack Chelsea, Chelsea looked a bit vulnerable. They looked a bit panicked when Newcastle hit them on the count. There was a, f a few instances in the first half when Joe Linton went forward or St. Max went forward and, and Chelsea looked like they, they could be breached, but Newcastle just didn't have the desire to kind of do that throughout the game. It's, it's a big frustration. Yeah, it is. And, and to be honest, he... Even if Newcastle do get back in that game, I think Chelsea can, you know, go through the gears and 
and you know crank things up. I mean, I think Chelsea went easy on Newcastle in the last ten minutes, um, and they, they did get a couple of openings with Almiron and Carroll, but uh, sadly they just couldn't even get a consolation goal out of it. I think it's a mentality thing. I think it's a big problem, and um, I, honestly, it feels at the minute it feels you, you don't know where they're going to go from here because if they lose a Crystal Palace, then then um, you know, there's, there's big questions got to be asked. Just a final question then before we let you get off and, and speak to Steve Bruce. Is Steve Bruce quite fortunate that there's no fans in the stadium? We have the argument that fans would change a game like against Manchester United to go for that second goal. But watching that performance today, 52,000, I can't imagine the atmosphere would be very good if they were watching that week in, week out. Yeah, I've actually referenced that in my match report that they would have probably been booed off at half time and um, certainly booed off at full time because it's the manner of the performance. When Newcastle fans him, they come here because you want to see the team have a go, not sit back, not defend and get people behind the ball. It's it's not good to watch. And uh, I think they would have certainly been booed off today, but um, I'm sure social media will be having it to say as we speak. Indeed they are. Well, they will let you get off and speak to Steve Bruce. You can read Lee's match report online in the player ratings as well. Thanks, Lee, for joining us. Thanks, now. So for those who didn't see the game, Newcastle um, weren't very good at all. Um, only one shot on target. That came in the 78th minute and it was deflected effort, which the keeper tipped wide, I think, more to be safe than to be actually fearful it was going in. That was a deflected shot from Almiron. 78th minute that took. Sean Longstaff had hit the bar about five, ten minutes before that with a great strike. And had that gone in, um, it would have been one of the best goals of recent memory to James Park. Would it have turned the game around? Yeah, hard to say. I think, as Lee mentions, is that just that frustration that Newcastle didn't threaten it too much? And they do look like they're lacking in confidence, you know. Um, and it is confidence is really key, isn't it? If you are told that you're inferior which we're not saying they have been, but if you're told or let them believe you're inferior to the opposition, then you're going to go out there with your heads already down. And it does seem to me, at least, that uh, against the top sides, a point, if you get a point, it's a bonus. You know, you go out there to contain, and it's not really what we want to see at Newcastle. Um, Chelsea should have probably won the game by many more goals. You had uh, Werner was on really good form. He didn't score um, he was looking to be the first Chelsea player to score five consecutive uh, five goals in five consecutive games since Didier Drogba in 2009. He had the ball in the back of the net, but it was ruled out for offside. But he could have had one when he picked the pocket of Cher. Who, Cher, funny one, he came on, a couple of really good passes, and then a couple of really bad mistakes. And he had the chance to pass it back to Darlow, and he just took his time. And then out, nicked the ball off him, and he should have, should have, he should have scored. But he, he squared it, and Newcastle... I managed to clear that was late in the second half and that really should have been three. Newcastle had a few little chances in the second half. There was an improvement in the second half. (laughs) Not exactly difficult when you consider the first half, but there was an improvement. Uh, Hayden was played in uh, just just beside the penalty spot and put over into the Gallagher. The referee blew for handball, so his blushes were were spared. And then Joe Linson had an effort. Good ball into him from St. Mark's edge of the box. Good first touch. And he picks his spot and he puts it into the Gallagher as well. Really need to be getting that on target, especially when the chances um, are very limited against a very good Chelsea side. Um, and Newcastle, I slightly said it there, the frustration is that when Newcastle did attack and it was very limited, but they proved Chelsea could be got at. You know, Carroll nearly scored with the last effort of the game. Uh, it was deflected wide in the side net, but he probably should have scored. But there were there were moments there where you were just kind of asking Newcastle to do a bit more, to have a bit of desire, to have a bit of belief. Um, but one thing that stood out, I don't know if you guys were watching the game, but uh, Steve McMahon, who was pundit for BT Sport, was getting really angry because Newcastle had a throw in near to the Chelsea box and it ended up all the way back to Caldarlo. And I think that just sums up the day for Newcastle. That, to me, just sums up a lack of belief, a lack of direction um, on the pitch. And that really needs to change because the performances aren't good enough. The results clearly aren't good enough. Um, and it's going to be a very interesting running up to the new year. Hopefully, things can be turned around. Um, but I think everyone, understandably, will be frustrated and disappointed 
I'm not maybe all that surprised at today's result. You can head over to Chronicle Live where we're bringing you the latest quotes from Steve Bruce and any of the players that chat as well as the player ratings and five things that we learned from today's game as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>